over $2,500. Don't forget to get your raffle tickets. They're on sale right now. Tickets for only a dollar, six tickets for five, 15 tickets for $10, 35 tickets for 20. Go on out to the winning ticket at the end of the third quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we have a Hall of Fame introduction for this year's 2023 class. And our first Hall of Fame inductee, please put your hands together for Trisha Huber. <laughs> Trisha Huber started running when she was just three years old and eventually running her way into the Palatine High School Athletic Hall of Fame. She was the first runner in school history to place in the top 15 all four years of high school, including a third place finish in 1988 and a second place finish in 1989. Trisha went on to set many school records that are still current today. Trisha completed, competed with grace and humility that made her so endearing amongst her coaches, teammates, and friends. After a great high school career, Trish, Trisha ran competitively at the College of St. Francis in Joliet, where she earned her degree in social work. Trisha went on to coach high school track and cross country for many years in Joliet. Give it up for Trisha Huber.
It's the moment you've been waiting for all season long, football fans. So much anticipation this entire week here at Palatine High School with Spirit Week, Royal Rally this afternoon. But it's finally here now, homecoming football on PTV. Beautiful sky here at Chick Anderson Stadium as we welcome you to PTV on this beautiful Friday night. And it's a brisk one out here at the moment. It's only going to get colder. I'm joined by my partner, Johnny Pelletier. And Johnny, do you think this colder weather might be a factor in this one? I think it might affect the ball flight off kickoff and whatnot. Maybe how the quarterback's fingers are feeling after he throws it. But I mean, in general, it might not affect people as much as people think. I mean, you've got a lot of anticipation when you're on the field out there. And, um, so it might not play as much of a factor as people think, but I think it certainly plays a factor. Well said, Johnny. This night has been growing closer to underway for a good while now, as the golf cart parade was a spectacle as always, and our P very own PTV golf cart made its debut tonight. It's very exciting for our entire program. We're amped about it. We hope to keep expanding to bring you more Palatine sports to enjoy. It's a big step for us, and a big step for you could be clicking that subscribe button. It'll help you get notified more whenever we have streams up, if you miss our posts about it. And it'll enable you to watch your favorite Palatine sports teams more easily. It's really a win-win for both of us. It's completely free. All you have to do is click subscribe. No reason not to, we really recommend it. And for the first time ever, PTV has their very own merchandise. Yes, indeed, you heard us correctly. You now can rep PTV merchandise. We'll get in more on that later on. But very exciting, that link is in the chat and the description. Go support us in any way you know how and any way you can. We really appreciate it. As he'll get his kicking line now. Finding his kicking line. As he signals ready, he'll step into it. Sending us away on PTV Homecoming Football. As that kick out of bounds, a nice start for the Pirates. And that'll come out to the 40 right away for this Palatine offense. Johnny, not how Conant wanted to start that one. No, not at all. Maybe you want to start with a little better field position, but I mean, take what you can get. It could always be a lot worse, so. Yeah, we'll just see what Palatine uh, does with it now. Absolutely, I t completely agree. Not what they were looking for. As they'll set it up on the left hash. It'll be the star running back, Dominic Ball, in the backfield, along with Tommy Elter. Wide receiver in motion, Cole Fager. As he'll end up in the slot, and it's handed off to Ball. Conan in the backfield early. But there's a flag on the play. We'll have to see how that falls. But for the moment, Dominic Ball tackled little for a TFL. A little bit of a different start for Dominic Ball. As you've seen for the, probably our other broadcasts and maybe other games in the area that Palatine's played in, Dominic's always started off real quickly. But it is a Conan penalty. Will be a face mask. And uh, that does put the Pirates in maybe a, bit of, a little bit of a better field position. But definitely not the normal Dominic Ball start to this Palatine football game. Absolutely, somewhat of a play changer there with the penalty, as it'll be first and seven now, tacked onto the end of that play as the tackle was made. Elter now will audible. He's in the gun, two wide receivers on either side, as it's handed off the ball up the middle, and he'll be down. Looks like with about three to go to the Palatine first down, and Dominic Ball has had some electric moments on this field here at Chick Anderson Stadium, breaking the school rushing yards record. Johnny, a once in a lifetime experience to see it happen. And man, you can only imagine how it was for the team. Yeah, it must have felt great. I mean, that game was pretty out of hand early on. So it was cool to see Dominic Ball get that. It kind of made the game a little bit more special. Absolutely, his ball up the middle now. 
and he'll have a Palatine first down. Looks like Palatine's gonna stick to what they've been doing pretty much the whole season. They've been just starting it off, starting the game off, getting it to Dominic Ball, getting quick and easy yardage. And so far it's worked out, especially with that penalty early in the game. Not, not really um, Palatine's fault there, but um, yeah, right now keep they're gonna keep moving the sticks. So let's see what comes out with this game. Elter still in the gun. Will play action. He'll look downfield, heaving it to a wide open receiver and dropped. Dropped by Tyson Moore. Oh my, he had separation but could not hold on. Oh, that's rough. I mean, he definitely had, um, I mean, he de he basically, he almost had the ball. I mean, it was hard for him to really get a grasp on it. But um, it's okay. I mean, we saw Dominic Ball earlier a couple of weeks ago. I believe it was at Hoffman. I was not at the game where he, uh, he mossed somebody in the end zone. I don't know if you were there, Tyler, but We've been seeing great, uh, great catches by Tyson Moore. Absolutely, hopefully a fluke for him in this one, as it'll be Fager in motion. Elter still in the gun formation on the left hash. And it will be handed off to Ball now. Up the left sideline, he'll cut it up and get nice field before going out of bounds. About a yard short, as it'll bring up a Palatine. First in less than a yard. Yeah, probably inches. But a first down? No? No, they will call it a first down. Favorable positioning there for the refs spotting the ball as it will be a Palatine first down. Yeah, that's only going to help Palatine right there. Elter still in the gun. They're sticking to this formation with two wide receivers right. As it is handed off to Ball, he'll cut it up the middle and powering through. Gets towards the sticks as that'll go for a first down. Move the sticks. That's what I find Ball. so interesting about Dominic Ball. He is not really the tallest guy in the field, not really the biggest guy, but I mean, he still finds a way to just slip through defenders like it's nothing. And truly breakaway speed on the powerful running back there. Powering right up the middle. Always a good look in the gun formation. Getting your running back up as now it appears that We'll have three wide receivers left for your Pirates. Still in the gun. For Tommy Elter, let's see if he gets involved here. As he will. The screen pass out to Donnelly, and not caught. And a little extracurriculars after the play, but no flags are thrown. Looked like they got a little bit grappled up as very early on, Johnny, I think we're starting to see the impact of this weather as these receivers have dropped two passes early on as Elter will start 0-2. Yeah, like I said, I mean, two borderline pass, two borderline should have been catches. One by Tyson Moore um, earlier in the game. You don't really like to see it. Hopefully Palatine can uh, tune that up as the game goes along. Absolutely, Moore on the left now. The lone receiver on that side is just handed off to Dominic Ball out of the gun up the middle. And he'll get about eight as it'll bring out a Palatine third and two. Approximately here. Tommy Elter has had a good start to this season. Maybe not having the most dazzling stats, but he really knows how to manage a game. Getting it to his, the hands of his playmakers and just, it's a winning style of football as he hands it off now to Dominic Ball up the middle. As he will have the first down. Never a doubt on the Palatine sideline of that one is he is really incredible at those short yardage uh, games. Definitely a similar trend that we're gonna be seeing here probably for the rest of the game. Just handing the ball off to Dominic. We've seen it pretty much the rest of the whole season so far. And uh, wouldn't be surprised if we keep seeing it. As would I, as Jake Flores now in for the Pirates. He'll line up in the slot. As Moore still on the left, keep an eye on him. He's often the man they look to if they pass towards the red zone. As handed oh, wow. off, Dominic Ball in the gun. Makes a man miss and still fighting for it. As he might get a yard, might just be back to the line. Could have been a lot worse. He made a man miss in the backfield. He is so elusive, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think that um, 
kind of interesting. I thought they were going to run the pass play there, but I mean, just based on how they were lined up, but uh, went for the run play and uh, second and 10 right now. So let's see if the Pirates can get step back on it. This Palatine offense loves their runs out of the gun formation as they'll do the quick stand up there trying to get the defense to jump into the neutral zone. As now Elter will make a quick audible, now takes it in the gun. Up to Moore in the end zone and caught! Touchdown, Pirates! Tyson Moore! On the connection from Tommy Elter for the first Palatin touchdown of his homecoming game. What a start for your Pirates. I'd say that definitely makes up for what Tyson did earlier in the game, dropping that, that uh, borderline catchable pass. But uh, now here we are, Peloton got the lead, so we're all happy. It was great to see T uh, Tyson Moore get wide open. And uh, yeah. He's truly a special receiver out there. Absolutely. Makes big plays in the red zone consistently. Despite not being the tallest, he can get up yep. for a lot of these passes. Yeah, he got As open Heiser there. will <laughs> this one through. And Johnny, whenever you run a lot of run plays out of the gun formation, the defense often gets spread out, and the defensive backs get used to trying to get off blocks from those wide receivers. Looked like the DB was anticipating something like that there, and got a little too close to Tyson Moore. Yep. He just burned him. Never knew what hit him. Easy touchdown for the Pirates. Easy to see how he can burn him. I mean, Tyson Moore is just, he's so, such a fast player. He's able to get him over most I think DB's in this uh, conference. So uh, not a surprise there. Great to see the Pirates on the board. And for Tommy Elter, that was a passing window as big as he could see in his dreams. Wide open in the end zone. And despite being one in three on the statute so far, all three of his attempted passes have been exactly on the mark. Yeah. Keeping his hands warm out there. That's what you need to do in a game like this. You Indeed. just gotta stay loose pretty much the whole game. Get the blood flowing throughout your body, kind of keep that anticipation going. So you can play to your best level, I mean, pretty much. We've had some warmer games so far this season at home. It's our it's our first real cold one, as the players on both sides will have to adjust to this weather now. This as Heiser will line up to get his kicking line for this Palatine kickoff. It's probably Palatine's first game played in the 40s, I, th I believe. I would agree with that, Johnny. Yeah. Certainly an environmental switch up for them. Definitely, but it's just something you just gotta get adjusted to. It's part of football. Heiser booting it away. It'll be taken out from about the one yard line. And now cut up field, but down. Nice job by the Palatine special teams. Looked like he might've had an angle up the field on that sideline, but managing to swarm him very quickly. Number nine, Antonio Broadway. Almost took it down Broadway on that one. And this Palatine defense, whenever we talk about him, we try not to say it too much, but it's really hard to ignore the literally massive player out there. And that's Jalen Williams. He is unbelievable. We'll see what he has here on this one as Conant in the split gun formation, as it's a read option. He'll keep it and might get the first down. I don't know, I think he got out right at like the one or two. Yes, and it will be second in inches there. Yeah. The ball carrier there, Cody, uh, no, my bad, Matthew Mays. Sorry, I got my sheets messed up. Matthew Mays, the ball carrier there, lining up at quarterback. As we'll see what they do now. In the gun formation, only one receiver out there, lots of tight ends. Let's see if they look to run or go with the QB read. The ball is snapped and it will be handed off up the middle. But swallowed up wow. very well see the by the Palatine defense. The Palatine D-line and backers getting up on that runner real quickly. That yeah, they did. Love to see it. Yes, truly, they're very good at swarming to the ball on this Palatine defense. Yep. As it'll be third down and one. I may have been a little generous in where I thought the quarterback got out there on that first play, as now it will be short yardage for the Cougars. 
as considering their offensive strategy so far, would not be surprised to see a run. Nope, and the formation would agree. Tight ends out there now and stuffed. Yeah. My goodness, he was oh, wow. net, but forward progress will get them the first down. A nice play by the Conan Cougars there to get forward progress, that line pushing them forward. I don't know, I couldn't tell. I know, we're, I know we don't have the greatest angle in the world, unlike these refs, but I mean, it seemed like he didn't get it, but I guess he did. I mean, it was third and one anyway, so. Certainly easier to see on the field, but that's also what it looked like to me. As they'll be in the split gun formation, which is two running backs in the backfield. One receiver right, two left, one in the slot. As it will be handed off up the middle for a short gain. Nice job by the Pirates to get on that as quickly as they did, as Cooper Hansen, the ball carrier there. A slow, methodical drive for the Koenig Cougars. So far, as the clock ticks under four minutes and 40 seconds. Shortly. They'll line up in the gun once again. Exclusively gun formations for both these offenses. One wide receiver left. And they'll hand it off up the middle. And nothing going there. Jalen Williams wrapping up the runner there. Very nice play. Great start for him. Seems like Jalen kind of got through those O-linemen, stuffed him, was able to stuff the Conan running back pretty easily. Two wide receivers right, one left in the gun formation for the Cougars as they'll play action and bobbled but caught. Now up the middle, angling towards the sideline and down. That was number 15, Connor Minogue on the catch. A precision strike for the Koenig Cougars across the middle of the field. A nice read to the slot receiver on the curl as it'll go for a Cougars first down and a much needed spark in what looked like a slow, stagnant offense early. Yeah, it looks like uh, the receiver kind of uh, bobbled it a little, but he was able to get his hands on it. Ran, a tr ran about, I think it was 10, 15, 20 yards, right, Tyler? And I'd agree. Got the good yardage out of it. Definitely helps this Conan team. Definitely brings some spark into their offense. It certainly did, and they certainly appreciate it there on the Cougars sideline. As Matthew Mays will take the snap now, swinging it out quickly to his back. And a nice tackle there. My goodness, very nice. Jacob Stark, the kick returner, punt returner, and defensive back for this Palatine defense, takes him down. Very nice form on that tackle, as it'll be a second down and 14 now. It almost sort of looked like Jacob Stark kind of read that play from the beginning. He knew exactly where that QB was going was gonna to pass it to, and got him. Yeah, the quarterback there staring down his screen right as the bubble screen swung out. Maybe should have pump faked the middle of the field to throw the defense through some of a loop. But he'll line up now in the split gun formation. And he'll take the speed option and we'll pitch it out to his running back. But Jalen Williams gets all the way out there from his defensive end spot almost to the sideline to make that tackle. Quite a motor he has. Absolutely. It sure seems like Palatine was upset after that long first down play. Haven't really given them much to work with. Now it is third and 14. So if Palatine stops in here, it's going to be interesting. I think that Conan's going to go for the, probably for the field goal if they don't. Trey Wadowski running off the field now. He's an important part of this Palatine defense. The junior. Hopefully he'll figure it out. We'll try and keep you updated. But for now, Mays to take the snap. Receiver in motion. And he'll roll out on the bootleg. Rifles to his man. But incomplete. That pass angling toward the sideline. Couldn't quite reel it in. 
and it'll be fourth and 14 for the Cougars as they'll trot out their field goal unit. But a penalty. Could be a holding. We'll see. On those bootleg plays, oftentimes, when you roll out of the pocket like that, your offensive linemen have to compensate with some holding as the quarterback vacates the pocket. Yeah, it and it appears as if Palatine wisely declines the penalty, keeping it to fourth down. And it looks like they're gonna go for this for the Koenig Cougars, I'm thinking they really need something to stay in this game. I don't know really what the play is. We're still early in this game. I mean, we're only, Palatine's only up a touchdown. Could be a hard count, but it will not, will not be. be. Snap to Mays as he'll look deep for his receiver. And broken up, Jacob Stark. On the deflection. As the Pirates will take over. A huge defensive stop for these Palatine Pirates early in this one. What a play. I really don't know what the Kona coach was thinking there. I mean. I don't know what was the mindset behind not behind not going for the field goal, but we're still in the first quarter. I mean, we have a minute 13, but we're still in the first quarter. And Palatine's only up a touchdown. I mean, you could definitely come back even with, with some points there. You got a whole another quarter to work with, another half. So let's see if this goes back to haunt them. I'm all for being aggressive on offense, Johnny, but even Dan Campbell might have question that call there. Yeah, I don't know. And it wasn't even a hard count like you said earlier. It's not not like Aaron Rodgers. Certainly not. As looks to be a flag. Yep. Offsides on the Pirates. Oh my. Elter audible to a different play there before the ball was snapped. Perhaps threw off this offensive line slightly. It'll be a five yard penalty and a first and 15 for your Palatine Pirates. Still in the gun formation, three right receivers to his left. Elter looks to the screen pass, complete to Fager, as he'll have a very short gain. A nice job by this Kona defense to get right on it, as Cole Fager, he might be young, but he has breakaway speed, John. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he's a sophomore, I believe. I mean, he's one of those pieces that's gonna help this program for the years to come. I mean, we have a great list of seniors, but I mean, these new guys are also looking really good. And we have been looking really good. Like our development in JV and freshmen for the past two, three years has looked really good. So it's just really good to see where the future of this program is going. Always got to think about the future as Fager, the man on the screen pass, now in motion. As it'll be handed off to Ball. He'll cut it up and shed a tackle. Now up the left sideline. He'll be out of bounds. After a Palatine first down. An impressive run for Dominic Ball, being patient, following his blocks. And an underrated concept of his game is his mental toughness and thinking through his plays because he followed his blockers as far as he possibly could. Lots of great NFL running backs have made a career after simply being patient and waiting on their blocks to set up. And boy, he did it fantastic there. It seems like when I'm watching Dominic Ball, it seems like he's looking in slow motion, basically. Certainly, as now the reverse to Fager. He'll try and cut it up. And he will for nearly a first down. A very nice wide receiver reverse off the pitch to Dominic Ball. A nifty trick play will put them in short yardage position on second down. As the clock will wind down here in this first quarter. And it hits zeros. A great start for your Palatine Pirates in this one up 7-0. After the first quarter, Cougars yet to get on the board. We'll be back after a short intermission on PTV.
We are back here now on PTV for the start of your second quarter of Palatine Pirates homecoming football. Your Pirates have great field position to start this quarter. Up barely past midfield. As Elter looking to the sideline. As he'll have ball in the backfield. He'll continue to look how to utilize him as this game continues to progress, especially with the colder conditions. You want to keep that ball on the ground as much as possible. Absolutely. Palatine's done a good job of doing that so far, and they've actually been very effective on their ground game so far this game. They certainly have, as Elter to take the snap, he will, and hand it off to Dominic Ball out of the gun, cutting it to the right side. And he'll angle for the sideline now, and out of bounds at the 20 yard line. But it'll be a holding on the Palatine Pirates. Oh, a killer there. A great run by Dominic Ball, but it'll be holding. A five yard penalty. Man, that's tough. Very unfortunate for the Pirates, but luckily for us, Dominic Ball usually has a couple more of those in the tank. Absolutely, yeah, no, he'll be doing that pretty probably for the whole game. Hopefully he can afford to burn one there. Yep. As they'll back it up. Second and eight now. Ball still in the backfield, just switching sides now, and two wide receivers to the right of Elter, one to the left. As he'll go to take the snap, play action. Sitting in the pocket and firing downfield, caught Cole Fager on the seam. Finding the seam all the way up the right hash. And it'll be a Pirate first down on a big completion. My goodness, what a throw by Tommy Elter. I love Elter's ability to just look down the field. He's got great vision, I think, when trying to find receivers open. And as you, you, you could see it there, Fager was wide up and he can't, great first down right there. Not an easy read for a high school quarterback or a quarterback of any level for that matter. On the seam route there in verticals. As Fager again in motion, now in the slot. As Ball takes it, following his blocks patiently, and it will cut it up and in to the end zone for a Palatine touchdown. Dominic Ball taking that one to the house. That is two touchdowns for the Pirates today. Dominic's first touchdown, hopefully of many for this game. Pirates up 13 0. What an incredible job Dominic Ball has done so far, reading his blocks, staying behind that very strong offensive line and blocking wide receivers to get in that for the Palatine touchdown. As Heiser looks to extend the league, and the play is called dead. That looked like too many men, but no, a, a substitution? Very odd sequence, sequence of events. Of events. <laughs> yes, indeed, Johnny. But it seems that they've figured it out. As Heiser will reset. Probably not altogether thrilled about that delay. As he'll boot it through. Unfazed. A consistent kicker for these Pirates. And he has the lead up to 14-0 for your Palatine Pirates. We just like to remind you that the biggest way you can support us right now at PTV in all of our broadcasting escapades is to click that subscribe button. It's completely free, costs exactly zero dollars and zero cents, a bargain I know, and it'll keep you more updated on our broadcasts. And of course, for the first time ever, we have merchandise here at PTV. Some exciting, exciting merch out at our merch store. Check the 
comments and the description. It's in the pinned comment there. And all and any of that support would be highly, highly appreciated. I personally am partial to the white hoodie with the PTV logo. I think it looks outstanding. And our other play-by-play -play commentator, currently at a hockey tournament, shout out to Luke Jordan, is a big fan of the red quarter zip. It's not my style personally, but certainly, certainly a good look, especially on him. Hope you're listening, Luke, as it'll be booted away by Heiser. And now the returner will be swallowed up just short of the 25-yard line, and they'll start right there. Christian Courtney, a member of PHS PTV, out there for the tackle. A strong special teams play from one of our guys. Always good to see. Speaking of special teams plays, we've seen some great snaps from Sam Portera so far in this one. Also a PTV member. Not to brag, but we have some great players out there tonight as he'll cut this to the outside, but it will be a slight loss of yardage there for Cooper Hansen. It's another tackle there by Jalen Williams. Just dominating right now this game. This, this Conan O-line has had absolutely no answer for him so far. As you can see, this is probably the fourth or fifth time, fourth or fifth drive, time, I don't know what I'm saying anymore, where uh, we've gone for a loss of yardage, so. And so far on the sideline, man, he has not been able to sit still. He is amped for this game, and most likely just trying to keep blood th flow through this cold. But either way, he's ready to play as the wide receiver in motion on the jet sweep for Conant. And swallowed up now by your Palatine Pirates. Number 15, Connor Minogue on the jet sweep there. Gets a couple yards for the Conant Cougars. As it'll set up a th third and about uh, seven yards. This would be another big stop for this Palatine defense if they could make this one happen here. We'll have to see. Jalen Williams lining up at left end now. As it's play action and incomplete. Very nice defense there meeting the receiver just as soon as he met the ball. As it'll be a fourth down. Looks like they're gonna, they're gonna stay gonna out there again, again. Deep in their own territory. My goodness, Johnny, they are on their own 24 yard line. Now this right here is not- 26 yard line. Not Thank you, Emmett. My apologies. Uncommon. But perhaps a timeout. Yes, indeed, a timeout. I was gonna say, that's pretty hard to believe. They might still go for it. You never know. They might just be talking about the play. See, it's not particularly uncommon. I mean, you definitely see high school teams be more aggressive in fourth down plays like that's there. I was not necessarily super surprised, but at the same time, would I run that play? Probably not. But it's a different game than like college or the NFL. True. High school football can be changed more than any other game of football yep. or level of football in the world by just one play. One play can completely shift the momentum of any game on a high school field. For whatever reason, you don't really see that on other levels. Something to note. As, yes, it does appear that they're gonna go for it. Matthew Mays to take the snap, presumably a pass play and not a handoff to Cooper Hansen in the backfield. Let's see what they have cooked up. As they'll stand up trying to get them to fall off sides. Jalen Williams ended up on one foot there, almost falling into the neutral zone, but he managed to catch himself as it will be a punt. Wow. A nice play design there. Oh, and oh, off the right. helmet oh. of Jacob Stark. And it'll be Conant Ball. No, it will not be. Out of bounds. Oh, wow. Oh, my, a lucky break for Jacob Stark. 
that one ricocheted directly off of his face mask. Don't know if he couldn't see the ball, but goodness gracious, that had me stressed out. Certainly one of your more interesting punch formations with the puncher being that close to his uh, line. Certainly originally looked like it was gonna be a, a, a normal play they were gonna go for, it, but here we are now, Pouts has got okay field position. Ball on the delayed handoff, will cut it up and be tackled down. Now, it's about six yards. Another solid run for Dominic Ball as he's starting to rack up the rushing yards. As the Pirates in the gun formation on the right hash. And he'll throw. Barely caught. Nice catch by Donnelly. That'll go for a Palatine first down. And Donnelly is a big receiver. Absolutely. Nearly could play tight end. And he did up until his high school career. All the way through elementary school, middle school, Pee Wee football. So he's got a tight end skill set for sure. A great blocker and great at reeling in catches that are outside of his ideal catch radius. As Elter, back to pass now, will look downfield, heaving to Dominic Ball and not quite able to haul it in. The running back on the wheel route. A classic tried and true play design, but doesn't turn out there for the Pirates. Probably one of those things, that, like we said earlier in the broadcast, has to do with the cold. I mean, there's a lot of days where we've been seeing, I mean, our other games where it's been much warmer, that would have been probably a catch, but. A nice job by Elcher there, too, to angle that ball towards the sideline. That was either an incompletion or a Dominic Ball catch. Yep. Couldn't have been an interception, so. Great awareness there is Dominic Ball now. Cutting it up. He's more of a runner anyways, as he'll cut it back. What a play by Dominic Ball. Oh my goodness. And he'll take it to the house. That cutting back. Going sideline to sideline, coast to coast. For that touchdown, Pirates. That's exactly what I meant earlier when I said it. It feels like he's watched, he watches the game in slow-mo when he's on the field. He makes a lot of like, makes a lot of moves that most receivers can't even see. He reads the defense like it's a book. And it now leads to a 20 nothing Pirate lead. Hopefully 21 as Alec Heiser looks to send this one, and he will. A surefire kick as per usual. And just the creativity by Dominic Ball. Hard to see it anywhere else as he'll take his talents to Tulane next year, committing a while ago now to play at that D1 organization and they'll be thrilled I'm sure to have him Absolutely. and hopefully he can start to contribute plays like that as soon as possible Loyalty being played by your Palatine High School marching band for the third time tonight and hopefully not the last. This marching band puts in so much work and so much time in preparing great sideline tunes, a halftime show, and some other songs that they throw in there throughout the game. Super underappreciated. Yeah, Thought great. I'd give him a shout out there. Great to see. I mean, this is, there are such an an integral program in any high school football game. So it's great to see them here. It wouldn't be the same without him, that's for sure. As Heiser sends this one away, hurtling towards the end zone. And it'll be taken out from the Palatine two. And down. Not the best decision there. 
Cooper Hansen might have been better off letting that bounce for a touchback as his Palatine special teams unit is ruthless out there right now. They'll start on their own 19. And out there jogs Jalen Williams and this Pirates defense. Another thing this Palatine marching band contributes is cadences by your Palatine drumline. Truly makes every game special. As that'll be swallowed up for no gain. The tackle ba made by number 63, Jalen Maiden, but there is a flag on the play. I think he also picked up the personal foul. Some Conant favored calls here. Definitely. Early. Like... Luckily for the Pirates, the scoreboard hasn't reflected it quite yet in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, it seems like there's been uh, calls like that that have been a little soft. Also, um, I feel like generous yardage by the referees for, t for tonight's game so far. Hopefully that changes as the game goes on. Obviously, everyone just doing their best, but just a little observation there by us is a fumble in the backfield now. As he'll, Mays will run around and will be down. What a nice play by the Palatine defensive line to rattle him. That definitely helped. As he fumbled that snap. Definitely And they got on him right away. It'll be second and very long. 21. Thank you, Emmett. 21. That is rough for Conan. I just want to make a quick shout out to uh, our guy John Joyce here, giving us a lot of help with yardages, uh, downs, and distances. So it really wouldn't be the same without you, John. And Integral's part of our scoreboard crew now as it's handed off now. Oh, and thrown down by Jalen Williams. Boy, that one felt personal, from up here at least. But I have a feeling that every single play is personal for Jalen Williams, as he has something to prove out there every single time. He wants to be the best, and most of the time he is a truly outstanding prospect. And Conan has under 70 yards of total offense. This Palatine defense, a strong, strong start as Mays back to pass, out to his receiver on the curl route. But he'll be tackled. A nice hit by Jacob Stark there. It's great for the Kona quarterback to get it away as, um, who was that for Palatine, it was wide open. Uh, Milo, but that is JV. Davion Farrow was basically wide open. He was able to get to the Kona uh, quarterback right in time, and it was lucky for Conan. Some strong pressure there. The ball. Strong pressure by this Palatine defense, and almost blocked. Oh, and that'll be roughing the punter as it's fumbled again by Jacob Stark. What a chaotic turn of events. A very chaotic play just unfolded as there was a roughing the punter called on the nearly blocked punt. May have been some crafty acting there, but I, this cold really taking a hole on these uh, uh, toll. My my apologies on these Palatine returners as that's two muffed punts so far. The first one they got lucky. Not so much on this one as Conan recovers and we'll get another shot as an, as Matthew Mays gets back out there. I'm sorry, Tyler, but I do not like that roughing the punter call. I mean, he had no way of um, of stopping your speed to get the to the punt. All he did was try to block him. So don't know, don't like the play. 
Mays there Another attempting call. the bootleg. Incomplete. As your Palatine High School marching band will start making their way down to get all set up for your halftime performance. We'll have that all here on PTV. Uh, we have a mic here that will capture all of the sights and sounds of this Palatine at halftime show with the music of Danny Elfman, including our personal favorite here at PTV, A Nightmare Before Christmas. And there continues to be confusion with the officials down on the field. Some odd calls certainly here early. As the Palatine coaching staff not overly thrilled with how it's been going is that ball was called complete as it'll be handed off now by Conant but will be swallowed up. Cooper Hansen with not much luck so far to get through this Palatine front seven. As it'll be swallowed up before the first down and it'll bring up third and short. Makes his way down to the Pirate 27 yard line. The result of the play brings up third and three for the Cougars. Have to think that this Palatine defense just has to be telling themselves to stay calm here in this one. Is I have a feeling this could get very chippy with how much the refs are getting involved and the personal fouls that have been called so far. Only time will tell as the receiver in motion. As Mays rolling out and taken down. What a play, number 55. Rolek, Philip Rolek making the play and getting the sack on Mays. My goodness, Matthew Mays looked like he got out of there, but he did not. And this would be a long field goal attempt. Another coded fourth down. The Palatine defense has just been taking care of the Conan offense so far this game. This would be a 48 yard field goal attempt if that was their goal. No, a 58. Good call, Emmett. No, 48. Never mind. But they will attempt to go for it here. Seems to be a timeout. I believe is Jalen Williams will be subbed off by the referees. As the man who just made the big play, Philip Rolek, is back in. Oh, Rolek off the field. Yes, good call, Emmett. His, hel his helmet came off on that play. As he went all out for it. So in comes number 61, Anthony Fontanetta. Mays in the shotgun. He'll heave it. And looks like it was caught there. Yes, it'll be ruled a catch. Certainly close as Conant will convert that fourth down. Their first fourth down conversion of the day. That is one of the very few fourth down conversions in this game for Conant. Mays here again after that precision strike as he'll look, take the snap in the shotgun. Play action, across the middle. And he will complete it on the slant. Perhaps a little bit of a RPO there. Looked like he pulled that ball out with haste, seeing his guy open. Could have also just been play action, we're not sure. But either way, a nice completion, as he seems to be settling into his rhythm in this one. The Cougars now trot out there. Second and three upcoming. As Mays will take it, hand it off to Cooper. He'll be down. 
Cooper Hansen still not having any luck against this Palatine front seven. No gain on the play brings up third and three for the Cougars. Not quite a TFL for Palatine, but held them to no gain. For Conan, they have to be thinking of just getting this goose egg off the board and not really putting themselves in a risky spot, yeah. not scoring before half. As somebody jumps. That will be a, I, that'll be a false start on Palatine. I did not see a Conan. Yep. A neutral zone infraction there. An unfortunate play there for Palatine. Steven Laspisa comes back on to complete this Palatine defensive line. Our resident wizard and producer here, Emmett Jordan, has not been happy with any of the calls here in this one. As I've just been informed that he will be suiting up to play referee during the second half. We'll have to get somebody else to do the computer or just get a really long extension cord. We'll get you more on that yeah, soon. Guys, if you Keep you updated. Like, come over. But now, play action. Mays. And towards the end zone, knocked away. Nice job. Julian Bay out there to break that one up. Looked like he got two hands on it. Could have picked it. But either way, very nice deflection. Second down now for Conan. Mays in the shotgun. He'll bootleg and take it himself, evading a tackler. And now inside the Palatine five yard line. A nice read there by Mays to keep it himself. He's a threat with his legs. As it'll be third down and goal now. For the Kona Cougars. About three to go as he'll talk it over in the huddle. His Palatine defense looking to hold strong. But a timeout called. And, there's a timeout. and they will talk it over there on the Conan sideline. And as they talk it over there and try to get a place set up. We'll be right back here on PTV. Third down now. Mays running it himself, and he'll be in. Conant, touchdown. Finally, Conant getting a touchdown there. That'll definitely put some spark into their bench. Matthew Mays taking it himself on the quarterback scramble. As they'll get the goose egg off the board. 21 to six. That's the momentum for going into halftime. 
big momentum if you're a football team. Just try to build off that. Barring, of course, a Palatine score before half, we'll see how aggressive they want to be. Looks like some late substitutions here on special teams. Might they go for it? No, they will not, but you never know. Might be a fake, Johnny. Yep. What if I just called a fake right now? We'll see, Tyler. Not a fake. <laughs> like I said, no possibility of a fake there, as he'll kick it in for the extra point. And now the Pirates will come back out. We'll have to see again how aggressive they really want to be here. They're up pretty substantially two scores separating these two teams. Gotta wonder, do they want to risk a turnover here by being aggressive and passing the ball? Or do they want to keep it on the ground, maybe hope for a run to break big? Or will they kneel it down and just go into halftime with the advantage? Probably gonna kneel it down. Might as well, don't risk anything, you know? A solid idea there, Johnny. Tyson Moore and Jesse Blake, the two kick returners here now. As Stark not out there at the moment. No, he is. He is out there. Number four. But he seems to be in more of a blocking position here. Certainly could end up with the ball. You never know. As he's had some big returns before. Struggled so far in this one. But hey, it's never too late to make a big play. And if he does, both those muffs will presumably be forgiven as it's sent away the squib kick from Conant, scooped up by Moore as he'll cut it to the outside. Looks like he might have an angle. Cuts it up towards the middle and he'll stay on his feet, throwing a man off on his way out of bounds. A nice play by Colton Moore. And now, Johnny, I think that changes the mindset. Yeah, great run by Tyson Moore there. Definitely changes the mindset. Maybe they'll try to go for something. I mean, you got 30 seconds left. Might as well go into halftime with some uh, little bit of extra energy. For sure, at least get into Alec Heiser field goal range, which he's a great kicker. Don't need to get as close as you might if you had another one back there. Target line about the 20-yard line for his max as Elter back to throw, striking across the middle. Moore has it, cutting it back over as a quick timeout for the Pirates. What a nice play design. Nice read by Elter. He has looked spectacular in this one so far, putting every ball on the money, and he stepped up to this homecoming game. It has been a great game for him so far. The cold has not seemed to affect him too much here. That is great to see. You want to see a quarterback who will adapt to any sort of environment, quiet or loud, hot or cold. Great to see him so far tonight. That it is always good to see your quarterback stepping up on the biggest stage. And this is the biggest stage we've seen so far. Homecoming football, a little extra special, a little extra pressure on the players, not wanting to disappoint the inflated number of fans here to watch this one. Palatine's offense back out there. But a timeout for the Conan Cougars. And as they talk it over, so will we. We'll step away for a moment. We'll be right back with you.
once again, we have a Ford F-150. The car is blocking a gate. Once again, a white Ford F-150. Your truck is blocking the gate. Lead. We are back here on PTV. As the Pirates will look to put a score on the board here before a half breaks. Still one timeout to go, so can afford to stay in bounds one more time. Let's see what they have cooked up as it will be four wide receivers and ball in the backfield. Elter back to pass, looking downfield. Scrambling to his right now as he'll take it himself. Cutting it up and he'll put his shoulder down. What an effort. A pirate timeout. What a play by the quarterback, Tommy Elter. He is strong with his legs. Not necessarily his greatest skill, though, as he deliberated going out of bounds there, deciding to lower the shoulder. And his sideline appreciates that greatly. A little bit of a different thing there, but effective. I mean, it was a great run by Tommy Elter. Boy, he wants to win. The Pirates out there now in the heavy set. Jalen Williams looks like he'll be in at tight end to block. Perhaps a running play in coming. But who knows, maybe he could catch a touchdown. You heard it here first. And most likely last, but whatever, whatever it's worth, as long as he's an eligible receiver, certainly a chance. As Elter in the gun now. Two wide receivers to his left. Play action! And, oh. my goodness, the, it was. It, it was intended for Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams faking the block and then leaking out there from his tight end spot. I was almost the smartest man alive. Yeah. But unfortunately not to be. As they'll kick. A field goal now. My goodness, almost the highlight play of the year. But Palatine can't be too upset as they'll attempt to boot it through. They'll snap the ball and Alec Kaiser sends it right through. 24 to seven, Palatine extending this lead. We are back here on PTV as Heiser will look to send this one away. The Pirates in a great position. Me and Johnny were talking about it before they had their drive in the, off the strong Tyson Moore return. 
that they might play ag aggressive and look to score, and they did, looking to send that one into the end zone for a touchdown. Unfortunately, not to be, as Heiser does a squib kick now to burn as much clock as possible. Now scooped up and swallowed up swiftly there as there will be 0.2 seconds on the clock <laughs> oh. for Conant to run a final play here. And it'll go to 0-0. Zero, Palatine zero. sideline, not overly it'll, thrilled. It'll be, zero, it'll be zero, zero. But no. no, the clock will bleed to two zeros. But still seems to be a bit of confusion on the field on whether or not they're going to run a play, so we'll have to see. Definitely some interesting officiating, to say the least, early in this one. It's been a very odd game in terms of officiating so far. Certainly has been. As, yes, it looks like the defense will stay on the field. Jalen Williams was already halfway to the locker room as he'll put his helmet back on, buckle his chin strap, and get back on the line to try and provide some pressure here. As the Pirates will most likely be in prevent defense, as they are with three high safeties. Most likely only rushing three. And yes, point two still on the clock. As the Cougars were, will attempt presumably a Hail Mary. As they have four wide receivers out, a tight end, and obviously the quarterback in the backfield. Mays in the empty set. Three safeties high. A jet sweep. Interesting play call, to say the least. Definitely not the first expected thing there, but... Getting that in the hands of Cooper Hansen, maybe trying to get him some stats before halftime. He's had a rougher night so far, but the Pirates will go into halftime. And now, an exciting halftime show. It'll be the music of Danny Elfman for this Palatine marching band. And again, our favorites, up, our favorite up here at PTV, A Nightmare Before Christmas. There will also be performances by Palatine Varsity Color Guard and Varsity Palms. It's been a pleasure having you so far here as we approach halftime, and we'll see you at the end of it. Here at... Please enjoy this year's marching band field show, which features the music of iconic film composer Danny Elfman. It will feature the music from some beloved TV shows and films, such as Spider-Man, Tales from the Crypt, and The Nightmare Before Christmas, featuring senior soloist Hector Garcia, Edward Scissorhands, and Beetlejuice.
And now, please enjoy a special performance from the Ponds and Color Guard teams. They'll be performing the cold play hit, A Sky Full of Stars.
Once again, we're we'll about the winner of the 50-50 raffles in the third quarter. Last chance to get in. Pilots up over the top. Let's see if they can win it. Let's see if they can win it. Let's see if they can win it. We are back here on PHSP TV as we come out of halftime at this homecoming football game at Chick Anderson Stadium. Your Pirates are up 24 to seven so far in this one. I am Tyler Schiavone, joined by Johnny Pelletier. And Johnny, who's your player of the game so far? So far, I gotta say it's Dominic Ball. He has two touchdowns tonight. He's been running the ball great tonight. Been look, I mean, been looking the field really well. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's anybody that really can come too close to him. Indeed, as Cooper is pushed out of bounds there. Yes, I'd have to second your opinion on that one. Dominic Ball has been running expeditiously in this one so far. With such incredible dexterity on the sideline and following his block so far, he's been patient. He's not had to make up plays completely with his speed and has been able to use his mind as well to put himself in the right position to make big plays. And he certainly has so far in this one. But for now, it's your Conant Cougars on offense. He'll be in the gun and keep it himself. And puts his shoulder down, powering his way out of bounds. It's a smart play there to get out of bounds. I mean, he really laid the shoulder on him. So, kind of wanted to control the damage there. Matthew Mays, so far in this game, has been a threat with his legs. A good amount. Perhaps not as much as we thought, considering his reputation for being a dual threat quarterback, but certainly making his impact felt on that play. As he'll line up in the gun formation again. In fact, it's the exact same formation. As he'll hand it off this time to his tailback, Cooper Hansen. But it'll be a strong tackle to hold him to a short gain. It'll now be third and four. A very nice start to the half for the Pirates on defense so far. They'll look to make the stop. And Barrington and Hoffman right now in their own game are tied 14 to 14, a close game over there. But here, it'll be play action and hits his receiver and no, no! Oh my. It'll be called defensive pass interference. Wow. I, I don't know. I don't know about that one. You know, Johnny, that is one of the calls of all time. Yeah. I must say. That is one of the calls that I've ever seen called in a football game. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about that. It's, it's unfortunate. Certainly a call there. At their own 45-yard line. It's just, it's 
it's very sad to see that. I mean, it truly is. But what are you going to do? Can't control everything can't really in this one. As he'll hand it off to his tailback now and sent down. Hard there. Jalen Williams on play. As per usual, he has to be nearing double digits in tackles. He's yeah. been a presence. And we're just getting started in the, in the second half. Certainly. He's been flying off that edge on pass plays, but on run plays especially, he's been great using swim moves to get inside and really bottle up this running attack. Sorry. As now, Matthew Mays to take the snap. He will, drops back, he's looking downfield but will elect to scramble out. He'll heave out of bounds. I think he's kind Throw, of throwing that one directly to the sideline, not wanting to risk an interception there. A smart play to get that ball out because Jalen Williams was chasing him with reckless abandon. I think we just got to appreciate May. I mean, this game, I mean, he's been, or Mays, he's been very impressive with how he's kind of run the, ran the ball. He's been running the ball a lot for his team, kind of getting his team out of very deep trouble so far. The dual threat quarterback, always entertaining. And certainly common in high school football. I think it's been the same formation just about every play so far. As Mays back to pass, scrambling again. Deja vu as he'll heave it. And that'll be called incomplete. Nice defense there. Would have been an impressive completion. Throwing all the way across the field. It'll be Rufus Clark, the junior, on that pass breakup. Fourth down incoming. That'll be a fourth and 12 as Mays looks to the sideline, gathering his play and checking his play sheet. Now snapping the ball, rolling out. Palatine's defense in pursuit. A nice move, and another nice move. Now heaving it, incomplete. And had to check, but no flags on the play as Palatine's offense will take the field. A strong hold for the Palatine defense as they look to melt as much of this game away as possible. Nice field position now for Elter and his offense. Donnelly, the lone receiver, out to the left and one-on-one -on -one coverage. I think you can almost see him licking his lips. He's hoping for a pass play here. Elter to take the snap with Fager in motion. Clean snap and hand it off. To the outside goes Dominic Ball and down after a short gain. Another flag on the field. And yes, there is a flag. See what they call here. A Palatine hold. Certainly been a string of Conant calls in this one. I think but it's just been very interesting. Yeah, I mean, there have been, I think, pretty obvious holds by Conant that have not been called. And then we have a hold just like that for Palatine, and it gets called. So it has definitely been a, feels like a very favored game towards the Conant Cougars. Though perspective is important, as we don't really have anything to complain about at the moment. Yeah. Probably become more of a talking point if this game gets close. I think this so. Palatine offense is going to make sure that we don't have that much to talk about here. As Moore, now the receiver on the left. A 
as it'll be a trips formation in the pistol. And now out to Moore on the quick screen. He'll fight, barely getting past the line, a yard or two on that one. A nice effort by the receiver. This will bring up second down and 15. Now Donnelly out to the right. More to the left. Ball in the backfield. See what Elter's got. He hands it off. Up the middle goes Ball and stumbling forward. Angling for the original line of scrimmage. And he'll just about get there. Third and 10 now. We haven't seen the typical running of Dominic Ball so far in this quarter. I know it's early, but see if they want to maybe run a little shorter, try something different in the locker room, because they got a pretty good lead right now. So we'll see what goes on. Let's see what Mr. Miller is cooking up for this Peloton offense. As Elter looks on the slant and he's got him. That'll be a first down for Ryan Donnelly. A nice play call. And it'll go for a first down. Great execution so far by Tommy Elter. He has been really almost perfect in this one. He hasn't made any mistakes, if any. So, hey, always good to see. As he now rolls out, a quick screen to Dominic Ball. He has some space, cutting it up back inside, finding space and spinning out. So agile on the screen pass is Dominic one those, Ball. One of those plays where it's pretty much, that's only Dominic Ball who makes those. I mean, he just runs through defenders like it's nothing right now. He's Sir. been doing that also for the whole season, Tyler. Certainly has. If they took their numbers off their jerseys right now, I'd still know who Dominic Ball was. Just based off that, yeah. And looking for the end zone for Moore, and it's rule day. Catch, Palatine, touchdown. Tyson Moore takes a bow. Great catch there by Tyson Moore. Kind of losing his footing as he got later into the end zone. Good thing he kept the ball. It is now 30 to seven in favor of the Pirates. What ball placement by Tommy Elter, putting it where only his receiver could catch it. Tyson Moore, what a day. Two touchdowns so far in this one. Heiser. For the PAT, not an issue. What a drive for this Palatine offense. And boy, what a snap by Sam Portera. We mentioned earlier that Dominic Ball is our player of the game so far, but we hope Sam Portera knows that he's always our player of the game. Truly, in our hearts. You won't find a better long snapper this side of the MSL West. We'd like to thank you for watching here. We're approaching 200 concurrent viewers at the moment. So we really appreciate you tuning in. And if you'd like to support Palatine PTV and help us bring more games and broadcasts like this to your very television screens or whatever device you're watching on, we encourage you heavily to click the subscribe button. It's completely free, and it's a great way to support. And, very exciting, as we mentioned a couple times before, we have PTV merchandise. It's in the pinned comment and in the description. Man, we have some great items. We have some great designs, very simplistic, very nice, very clean, goes with everything. I mentioned earlier, I'm partial to the white hoodie. Man, it just is going to look so good. The black hoodie, also very nice. Might actually get both if I can't decide. Certainly goes toward a good cause. Help us do more broadcasts like this. We sincerely appreciate it.
as Heiser, a sky kick there. And that'll be fair caught. At the 32, probably a wise decision, the Palatine Special Teams Unit barreling downhill on that one. We'd just like to give a special shout out very quickly to the Palatine High School Marching Band once again. They played a great halftime show in less than ideal conditions. So hard to play those wind instruments, especially the instruments with reeds and brass instruments too. In these conditions, your tuning gets out of whack. So they made some great adjustments during the show. Sounded spectacular. As Conant pushes it up now. Seems like they'll have the first down. They'll get a nice spot from the refs. Not altogether too surprising, and they'll have a fresh set. <laughs> Not too surprising, considering where the officiating was wrong, but it uh, seems like Conant's uh, needed it so far tonight. Cooper Hansen with, with his first big play in this one. He struggled so far, especially in the first half, but he's hoping to get moving on the ground. Let's see if they try to give him involved in any, any other way as well, but for now, it'll be handed off to him up the middle, and a flag comes out, and a little bit of pushing after the play as well, and a holding call for the Cougars, and Johnny, I can't believe my eyes. That might be a call against the Conant Cougars, unless I'm seeing that wrong, of course. That's a very rare call against Conant this game. I mean, I don't know. That's probably their first or second penalty, even though it should have been more than that. But uh, can't complain right now. Hopefully that, bring, that starts to change into the officiating for tonight's ball game. Certainly have to hope so. Though not been a bad result for the Pirates. No. So uh, 31-7. As in the split formation, it'll be pitched out. A quick pitch there and a nice tackle by the Palatine defensive backs. Very nice play. Number 25, Alex Pena. What an impressive showing it's been for this Palatine offense in this one. They've really been strong, steady, no interceptions. No turnovers. Just played a clean game of football. Got to appreciate it. As now Matthew Mays to take the snap. With a second down and 18. He'll drop back, step up, and look to throw, and it's out of bounds. Looked like it was pretty well covered anyways. Yeah. He was blanketed in coverage by Rufus Clark. Not sure what the Conant quarterback saw on that one, but perhaps it was a design play to come back to the ball on that throw. Well, really right now, if you're Conant, there's not really too much you could do. It's kind of a blower right now in the third quarter. I think you're kind of, I mean, maybe not quite at that point yet, but you're kind of at that point where you just try different things and uh, just hope for the best. And hopefully maybe you could get back into the game. Who knows? They certainly hope so as now in a more aggressive formation than they've been in all night. Four wide receivers out there, one in motion. As a low snap, a man unblocked off the edge and almost picked by Jalen Williams. And he is not overly happy that he dropped that one. Still will go down as a deflection in the stat book. Would have been nice. Would have been a nice addition to your Jalen Williams bingo card. He already has a sack, a TFL, certainly has a tackle. He almost had a touchdown catch, and that would have been an interception. But unfortunately not to be. Certainly not a situation where he needs it though, as this will be punted away. Skyward punt now, right out of bounds. Nice catch by the Conant sideline. Can't tell who it is from here. As your Palatin offense will trot out there. Getting later in this one. But 
this Palatine offense will still look to put on a show for the big crowd still gathered here. Absolutely, yeah, great to see, especially for homecoming weekend. Elter takes the snap, off to Ball. Cuts it back up to the other side, but it will be a flag as Dominic Ball still has a nice play. Bringing it up. Cutting it up, 25 yards on the rush, but it will be holding on the Pirates, unfortunately. Seeing that flag early. Has Jalen Williams on the sideline laughing with his teammates now. He really wanted that pick. Certainly would have been icing on the cake. Surprise, a Palatine holding call once again in this matchup. I would say to cross that one off on your bingo card, but I'm pretty sure you've pretty much worn it out at this point. Yeah, this is getting ridiculous. Only so much you can do oh, yeah. about officiating. You can't control it from up here. Certainly not. And it certainly hasn't impacted the outcome of this game so far. Here's Elter to take the snap and the gun. He'll look for Donnelly, he's got it. No, never mind. I apologize for the missed call there. I had no idea from the angle I was sitting at. As it was a drop, as it continues to get colder and colder here. It is still very cold here. Uh, 46, 46 degrees. degrees. Certainly the coldest game we've had so far this season. Brutally cold. And this wind chill is killer. Here goes Elter, out to ball on the screen pass. The slip screen, sheds a tackle, and cuts it up now! Oh my goodness, what a play! He'll cut it up! Down the middle of the field, angling towards the right sideline. And he'll shed another! My goodness, Dominic Ball, have a night! He is Houdini! And he's up past the 15 yard line. What a play, Dominic Ball. Another great rush by Dominic Ball there. Just rushes through defenders like it's nothing. What a play. We had to just sit there in stunned silence. As Dominic Ball turns a simple slip screen into a work of art. As it will be a timeout. So we'll take a break for a moment and be right back with you. We've had a lot of great shout outs tonight to a lot of different parts of this homecoming game, the things that make it tick. But now we'd like to shout out you watching as we have just hit 900 YouTube subscribers. We are extremely thankful as the pump fake by Elter towards the end zone, touchdown! Tyson Moore, his third! What a night! The hat trick for Moore. Tyson Moore with three touchdowns on the night. Three great passing touchdowns. And we have a 
two things to be really happy about. Nine hundred subscribers and a Tyson Moore touchdown. That we do. What what outstanding timing. But again, if in case you missed it, we did just hit 900 subscribers on YouTube. Basically within 10 seconds of when Tyson Moore took that one in. Certainly memorable. A moment I won't forget personally. And a big step for our organization here at PTV is Heiser. Boots it through. Extends the Pirate lead 38 to 7. And then once again, we'd like to say thank you. We've reached 900 YouTube subscribers. This is a massive, massive milestone for all of us here. Something we've been talking about all day and all season really is something that might happen that we were hoping would happen. And you made it happen. But we will look forward to the future to 1,000 subscribers. That would open up a lot of opportunities for this broadcast channel to have a lot more influence and things in the YouTube algorithm that are hard to explain, but trust me, they would make a massive difference. So we would really appreciate it if you, again, would subscribe, and thank you to all of you who have. If you want to show your PTV pride, you can certainly visit our merch store in the description. Check out some of our great stuff. But once again, thank you for everything. And thank you for watching, most of all. As we're under four minutes and 30 seconds here, as the Pirates will look to kick it off back to this Conan offense. We're back here on PTV. Heiser looking to kick this one away. The squib kick, bouncing. Now taken in by Conant, and they'll dodge up on a nice hit. A stifling hit by Julian Bay. You can hear that all the way up here. Yeah, that was a big hit. Certainly got us still make a statement late in games. Yeah, that definitely hurts a little more, those hits in these cold weather Certainly. games. Certainly. Best analogy I can put it is when you're playing baseball, you hit the ball in the wrong spot, your bat in a cold day, your hands are just stinging. That's, I guess, the best analogy I can put it. It kind of hurts a little more when it's colder. Certainly. Different kind of pain here, but. And, these, and their pads, too, are very cold, certainly. Oh, yeah, even, absolutely. Even with their body heat radiating through the jersey, but. Yeah, certainly high impact out here. As now, he'll roll Jalen Williams in hot pursuit, but he'll turn a corner and make it up. Mays, once again, showing his dual threat ability. But you have to look on that play. I have to go and look at that after this game again. I want to see that again for myself. But it looked like Jalen Williams was running stride for stride with the dual threat uh, dual threat quarterback Mays that is unheard of yeah, because Jalen Williams is six foot six and on the heavier side of 250 pounds a nice tackle there by the Valentine defense that one made by Christian Courtney a PTV member himself Love to see our PTV members showing out here on the Palestine football team. These guys, like Christian Courtney and Sam Fortier, will definitely be helping us throughout the basketball season and other broadcasts to come after the football season. He certainly will. And the ball will be snapped. Early pressure by this Palatine D line. And they'll take him down for a sack. Nice play. Made by the Palatine 95. Steven Laspiza, he's had a very nice game so far. And he'll add a sack to his impressive performance. He's 
Cole Fager back on punt return duties. As Conant looks to boot this one away. Good snap. And a good punt, too. Fair caught. And it'll take a Conant bounce. This could be an impressive punt. My goodness. That, is that might have been the best punt of his life. A great punt. Great bounce. That was some serious spin on that ball. Sending it head over heels there. Absolutely. As you may have heard over the headsets, Hoffman and Barrington tied up at 21. Closer game there than here. Absolutely. That must be a very fun game to watch. Barrington is extremely strong. I do believe we play them next week. And indeed we do. At Barrington, that should be a very tough game. Have to see how that one turns out. But for now, Elter looks to take the snap, and he will. Handing off to who else? But not Dominic Ball. Different. Who else but Jesse Blake? That is, of course, what I intended originally. Of course, yeah. Different thing to say. And a nice run by him. I personally am a big believer in Jesse Blake. I think he'll pick up right where Dominic Ball leaves off next season. Another young stud here in the Palatine program. That's definitely going to propel this. Absolutely. Uh, Lots of uh, strong junior class, not that I'm biased. <laughs> and there to the junior, Donnelly. Forward progress should have him pretty close to first down yardage. Maybe a couple yards short. No, oh, almost exactly a yard. This will end up being third and one. And this is a situation where Blake, the running back number eight, really strives. Short yardage situations where you can just power his way over the line. Not the biggest running back, but certainly one of the fiercest. As Colton Moore, the man with three touchdowns, a hat trick on the day. Uh, Tyson Moore, my apologies. Neutral zone infraction there. And it will be. Very nice. With Palatine in good field position. Better field position. Leads to a first down now. Kind of what you want going into the fourth quarter. Even it's though you have such a great lead. Exactly, exactly what you want, Johnny, is this clock dips under a minute left in this third quarter. We once again thank you for watching deep into this game as it's snapped and handed off to Blake. He powers forward. Very shifty and makes it up. And it'll be one more play to be called here before the quarter breaks. And that looks to be the final play of the third quarter with the score your Pirates 38 and the Cougars 7. That will end up being the final play, I believe. And we'll move on to the fourth quarter after a short break here. We'll be right back with you on PTV. We are back here now on PTV for this fourth quarter 
the fourth and final quarter, of course. We are Palatine football. We thank you for joining us once again here on PHSP TV. As Elter in the back take it, he does hand it off to him. So fast, making it up to the first down. Tough running for any pirate running back in the backfield, whether it's Ball or Blake. Have to imagine that they'll keep it on the ground here. And they will to Blake for no gain. The Kona defense doing a nice job of the front seven collapsing on that one. If you're Palatine, all you can do now is burn clock. I mean, just you got, all you gotta do is just run it out for the rest of the game. Try and come home quickly. Here comes Elter in the gun. It'll be trips right as it's play action. And too low on the screen pass to Donnelly. Really, Elter's first misfire tonight. He has been dead on. Yeah, he's been pretty good. Pretty much any sort of incomplete pass has been. Pretty much every incomplete pass has been due to receivers not catching the ball. I mean, they've been great passes, but uh, just receivers weren't able to capitalize on them. And that was also early in the game. Receivers have definitely gotten warmed up to the game. I mean, gotten warmed up to the weather and uh, shows on Palatine's uh, score right now. That one just a little too low there as it's play action again. Elter looks for the slant and Donnelly cannot reel it in. And they will most likely punt this one away as the special teams unit does take the field. Donnelly just not quite able to reel that one in as it is very cold here at the moment. Although the temperature might not say as such, the wind chill is really brutal and has to be worse on the field than it is up here. So Elter will punch it away. As for the Cougars, it'll be Connor Minogue back. And a nice punt by Elter. Very nice. Placing that ball pretty much as well as he could into Cougar territory. been a very windy game so far, but it really hasn't seemed to affect uh, how the ball has been moving off the kicker's uh, foot. I mean, they've been pretty dead on with field goals tonight, and kicker's been kicking it a long way, so. The right legs of Heiser and Elter have been spot on in this one. Yep. As here we go with a Conant drive, and he'll heave downfield. Tight coverage. <laughs> And incomplete. No flags. Yeah, I think Mays just a little bit, a uh, little, little bit of a long pass as we have an uh, injury break right now. Can't tell who that is right now. Seems to be a Conant player down as we'll step aside for a moment.
Conant player getting back on his feet. Great to see at this stage in the game. So tough in this cold weather to make sure you don't get injured out there. But back comes this Conan offense in the split gun formation. That'll be two running backs in the backfield as they will pitch it on the speed option. A nifty play, they've ran it a couple times and he's got a little room. Number 15, Connor Renaud, he's been everywhere on this Conan offense. And he's certainly made an impact there. They've run that speed option a couple times, Johnny. It's been pretty effective for the most part. Yeah, Minogue's been their guy so far. I mean, when at least when it comes to a run play, I mean, he's been pretty effective for Conan so far. Cooper Hansen has struggled a bit here. So anything they can get going on the ground is very much welcomed by this Conan offense. Deliberation among the refs now. Clock is still stopped. Much of the dismay of Emmett Jordan. <laughs> it's very confusing as to why the clock is stopped. But. And it is still not moving. Not sure how he would have gotten out of bounds on that play, but. <laughs> Evidently it was stopped and we'll have another stoppage of play here. Never mind, we're still rolling. <laughs> and a handoff now. Swallowed up quickly. Cooper Mason on the carry. Have to imagine that these Palatine starters, at least on offense, won't be seeing the field for the rest of this one. Got to keep them healthy. No reason to take any unnecessary risks here. As it'll be a handoff. Now and strong tackle. Very nice. With force. And that was Christian Courtney, the PTV man. On the strong hit. There. Nice job getting all the way out there for that one. My goodness. And the Cougars getting to the line quickly now. They'll have three wide receivers to the right. Mays rolling to his right. He's pretty deep and he'll just toss this one towards the sideline, out of bounds. Threw that one away effectively. Not the worst play in the world. And presumably they'll go for this at this stage in the game. That's what they have been doing. But maybe not. There's the punt team is out there now. No, they will punt this away, and Jacob Stark back to return this one. He's back at his punt returner duties. After two muffs earlier, hopefully he can get one steady on his hands. Here. A hard snap. And a bouncing punt touched by Palatine. That'll be Conant football. Palatine has played a complete game, but man, their special teams, especially on punt reception, has been shoddy. Definitely some things to look over in film. Yeah, I don't think it'll have that much of an effect on today's, or tonight's game. But, um, yeah. It's kind of interesting. I mean, yeah, definitely something you're going to have to look at tomorrow morning. Certainly something I'm sure they're going to talk about. 
as let's see if this offense gets aggressive and starts keeping things farther down the field in an attempt to get back into this game. As he'll roll, Maze on the boundary, pushed out. And I do believe that is a penalty. Let's see what the call is now. A little hard to tell. Some deliberation on this one. Holding on the Cougars. Ah, also holding on the Pirates. Offsetting penalties. And they will be replaying that down. No harm done for either side there. And it's still first down. Mays back to get this one. Two wide receivers to his left. His formation is getting more spread out as this game progresses for Conner. As up the middle there, nothing much doing. That carry goes to number 33, Isaiah Pardis. Some rotation in the running back room for Conan in this one. Always good to give guys some reps. Absolutely, yeah. We're at that point of the game now where we got about eight, a little bit less than eight minutes left in the game. You're down big. This is the time where you do that. You're working those guys. What a tackle for loss. Number 95, Steven Lespiza. He's having the game of his career. Yeah, this is probably Lespiza's best performance that at least I've ever seen him play. Very proud of him and how far along he's come. He's looked great out there, clogging up the middle. As there will be a late Palatine sub. Mays did not see it. But he'll roll towards the sideline. I apologize, that was not Mays. That was Brady Teschner under center there, number eight for the Cougars. That'll bring up fourth and just about six. Looks like they're gonna go for this one. As still under center is Brady Teschner. Let's see where he looks to go with this one. Play action, takes it himself on the quarterback option, sheds a tackle and into the end zone, but there's a flag on the play. Seems to be holding. Julian Bay, number five for Palatine, seems to think it's on Conan. Let's see. As it will be. It will be on. Ah. Oh, wow. Offsetting holding calls. Personal foul calls. So the offsetting personal fouls. So that should be a replay of the down, but it will go as a tough. Well, I'm honestly not sure on a personal foul. But the PAT is up. The PAT is good. Booted through there by number 31. For Conan Cougars.
great song being played through our loudspeakers. Quite impressive by this Palatine defense. They've been a jungle for this Conan offense. And this Palatine offense has spent a good amount of time in Paradise City, right in that end zone. And here we brought an umbrella, hoping to avoid some November rain. Definitely but not no rain so far. And now Palatine will have to show some patience here. To seal this game away. Potential onside kick incoming. No. And the train keeps rolling for the Palatine Pirates. As they'll take the field and look to salt this one away. The Pirates, the pa Pirates are just gonna run this clock out, just probably play the ground game again. It's been a while since Palatine had the ball. It certainly has been. Six minutes, 14 seconds showing in our game clock here. As in at quarterback is Tyler Varela. As it will be delay of game on Varela. Coach is not thrilled. So they'll move back five yards. Try to reset. Have to imagine that the offensive coordinator for Palatine Pirates, Mr. Miller, probably isn't too thrilled about that clock management by the referees. Just a hunch, though. I could be wrong. As now a carry to the outside. By the Palatine 28, it'll be Malik Miles. And a nice carry there for some short yardage. Here are Pirates now. With Tyler Varela in the backfield to take the snap. As he'll hand it off. Up the gut. Not much there. Lots of extraneous whistles on that play. As the cold wind starts to blow in. It's definitely feeling a lot colder here right now. It certainly does.
Just a quick, up, quick update. Late in this game, we're going to discontinue our down and distance markers here as a flag is on the play on a strong carry by Blake. Oh, you'd have to hate if it was had to come back, but it'll be fumbled. Out of bounds. Stripped out of bounds. Although I think a holding call on Palatine. Unfortunate break after unfortunate break here for your Pirates. But only so much to be done about it. Man, Johnny, as this clock winds down and this game continues to slow down towards the end of the game, I'd just like to know your thoughts on the game as a whole. What have you thought has gone particularly right for this Palatine offense, specifically? I think Palatine, I mean, it's obviously, I gotta say Dominic Ball. I mean, that's kind of the thing that we've been saying all game. But um, I just love uh, how, tight, how Tommy Elter has been able to see the ball, or has been able to view the field really well tonight. I mean, he's been able to find open guys. They're absolute dots so far. And um, yeah, it's just really good to see that that's how Palatine's done this week. And what about this Palatine defense, Johnny? Palatine defense, I gotta give it up to uh, my good friend Steven Laspiza. Having the game of his life right now, like you said earlier in the broadcast. But I think in general, um, in general we've had, I think the D-line has done a really good job getting past Conan's O-line. And it's actually the defense at home. It's done a really good job of getting past Conan's O-line, putting a lot of pressure on Mays for this game. And uh, yeah, definitely a big part as to why the Pirates are winning this big. As a fresh punter in the game here for the Palatine Pirates, he'll send this one away nice and short. As Palatine will touch it down, just pat midfield. But there is a flag. What else is new? <laughs> Do you have a flag counter for this game? I'm pretty sure we'd be in the triple digits by now. It'll be a holding call against Conan. We'd like to thank you for staying with us as we have surpassed 1,000 total views on this live stream alone. We appreciate you all for tuning in with us. It's crazy to think sometimes, Tyler. A thousand people have listened to your voice tonight. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's just a, as the quarterback on the speed option will take it himself. Nice job following his blocks. As again, Brady Teschner in a quarterback now for the Cougars. As this clock creeps closer to three minutes, but continually stopping play for these referees is honestly becoming quite irritating. It's it? getting very irritating. <laughs> it's feeling much more colder. It certainly many does. more times the clock keeps stopping. In any case, it'll be second and two, maybe not. As a Palatine personal foul. Not exactly sure what happened. And now the empty set for Teshner. See what he's got. He'll run it to the right side. And stiff arming. Strong effort. Three consecutive stiff arms for Teshner. A rare occurrence for a quarterback. But man, he's went out there head hunting for sure.
Teshner to take the snap. One wide receiver far, far to his right is there on the left hash. It'll be a handoff no matter what to number 32. He'll be up the middle pushing the pile for a solid little gain there. Bidke on the carry. And what is this? Sam Portera out there on this Palatine defense. I'd have to imagine his presence alone is striking fear deep into the heart of these Conant Cougars. Oh, I'd be very scared if I, if I like Conant. I might just concede. Do not want to play that man. Nope. But all seriousness, it's good to see Sam get some uh, downs at the varsity level. As we all know, Sam Laporta would go D1 at any position he wanted if he wasn't so good at long snapping. He's just so good at it, hard for him to not do it. As we have slight technical difficulties. We'll do a radio broadcast now. Sorry, we'll try and resolve this one. So Johnny, what do you think about this Conant offense carrying some momentum downhill? Um, wrong time to be carrying this amount of momentum. They should have been doing that earlier in the game. You have a point. But um, yeah, it's is now. Can't really do anything now with about a minute, a little bit under a minute and a half left in uh, tonight's game. Perhaps too little, too late. A little bit, but. Yeah, Sorry, really folks, off. we'll work on these technical difficulties for a moment. And get the feed right back up, and there it is. Shout out to John and Nate for resolving that. As the wizard, Emmett Jordan, casts a spell, accidentally unplugging the that camera. Was not me. Do not blame that on me. I'm unplugging the mic. That was not me. He claims it was not him, which that is. Not, we all know that's your, not true. Your foot, is, your foot is right on top of the That is not true. We all know that. Isn't that right, Tyler? Yes, he's, uh, he's delusional at the moment, I'm afraid. In all seriousness, that might have been my fault. Shout out to Emmett, obviously, for keeping our stream afloat. And a carry up the middle for number 33, Isaiah Perez for Connor. A strong carry late in this game. And we have, we are... Now under the minute mark here on this chilly, chilly Friday night as the clock strikes 10 o'clock. Getting a little late out here, Johnny. And perhaps the last play of regulation will be a run up the middle, swallowed up by the Palatine defense. But the clock was stopped. As it will go for a first down, but the clock is pretty on and off here. Sorry about the choppiness in the broadcast. <laughs> As it will be a false start. <laughs> I'm going to pass some headset along to our great producer, Emmett Jordan. There's some quick comments on the game here. I Obviously, you guys can tell, but this game is going to be dragged out as long as possible. Conant are looking to get as many false starts as possible here. <laughs> it's been a truly long, cold night, Tyler, here. Uh, an attempt to demoralize the Pirates, perhaps, here. Uh, no demoralizing here. 38-14 resounding victory. What a win for your Palatine Pirates. as the band cues up loyalty. What a win, setting a true statement here. As the players shake hands on a rough game in some aspects. 
They'll certainly set it right here in the line. This is a great tradition. I really appreciate it. Players shaking hands should be a tradition in every sport. And as the Pirates celebrate a spectacular start to homecoming weekend, we'll step away here at PTV. From our entire crew, our producer Emmett Jordan, cameraman Nate Royer, technical director John Joyce, operations supervisor Chris Lagunez, analyst Johnny Pelletier, and myself, Tyler Schiavone, on Play by Play. Have a wonderful homecoming weekend, everyone. You're watching PTV, live from Chick Anderson Stadium. Good night.